What's up, guys? Today, we're going to be talking about two character builds. Both have to do with uh, limbs and moving, but in different ways. And we will talk about the ways when we get there. So, yeah, for our character builds, we go up to level 12 on this channel because generally I find that's where most uh, campaigns tend to end. And I want you to be able to feel, you know, feel the full experience of these builds. And these builds are just meant to help inspire you and maybe come up with some cool character ideas. So uh, let's get right into it. Alrighty, so for our first build, uh, we're actually going to start off by talking about our race. Because we are all about movement in this build and going as far as we can in one turn. So, this may not be the most, like, the all-time optimized build, but I still thought this was a pretty unique and fun option. And for both of our builds, we're actually good, going to be dealing with the Monk class, which is a class I personally um, don't see too many cool builds around. So, I was like, well, let's, let's build around this. I think this could be fun. So, the main reason that we're going Centaur here is because of our speed. So, we get a 40-foot walking speed, which is amazing. Um, unfortunately, though, <laughs> uh, any climb that requires hands and feet is especially difficult because of our, our horse legs, right? So, when we make such a climb, each foot of movement costs us an extra four feet of movement. So, that is that stinks. So, I do have another recommendation for this build. And this recommends you talk to your DM, but this, I want to play this character so bad. I think it would be so funny if you played a Dampire Centaur. <laughs> because Dampires get the cool ability where you can, like, walk on walls and ceilings and have your hands free. So, like, I f then that extra movement wouldn't be a problem anymore. And just imagine, just how terrifying would it be if you see, a, like, a centaur running at you, like, from the ceiling. You know, like, I think that's amazing. <laughs> Alright. So, that's, personally, I would do Centaur or Dampire Centaur. Just make sure that your DM is okay if you keep your 40-foot movement speed um, instead of going down to 35. But even so, that's only 5 feet extra difference of movement. So, it's not, like, a huge difference, but, I don't know, I feel like it makes sense because... When you play a Dampire, you can keep, like, flying speed and swimming speed because your body, like, if the physical form isn't changing, and since you get your 40-foot movement speed from, like, your horse legs, I that would make sense to me. I'd allow my player to do that. So, yeah. And then we are also, for our class, uh, we are actually going to be starting out Monk here. And our <clears throat> main ability scores, uh, I use Point by here, just so you can see, so it's a little bit easier uh, than doing how I do stats at my own table, but we have wisdom is going to be our main stat with, uh, followed up by constitution. And then for our multi-classing purposes, we're also going to need to make sure that we have a 13 in strength. And then we're also going to want a pretty high dexterity. So we, we do have a lot of things going on that we need higher stats in, but Overall, I think we're doing pretty okay. We're, it, it, could be, it could be worse. <laughs> so, we're going to start off Monk. And right off the bat, we are actually... We're going to go five levels into Monk. Just, like, fully all the way in. And what that's going to get us is we're going to get our, you know, our D8 hit die. Uh, we're going to get proficiencies. We're going to get our unarmored defense, which is really great for us. So, it's our AC is dex plus wisdom. Um, we're gonna get, we're gonna get key points, uh, which is basically, you know, our, like, special monk thing. We get our unarmored movement, which is really what we're after, because we want to move as fast as possible in, like, one turn. So, for us, that's why I went monk instead of barbarian, because the barbarian movement, it's at higher levels, and it's a little bit harder to obtain, but for us, we get unarmored movement, like, at second level already, right? So, at second level, our speed increases by 10 feet while we're not wearing armor or wielding a shield, and this bonus increases when we reach certain monk levels, which is amazing. 
<clears throat> and then at ninth level, uh, we gain the ability to move along vertical surfaces, but we're not really taking uh, up to nine levels of monk unless you go past level 12 with this character. So at third level, though, we get our monastic tradition, and I went with Way of the Drunken Master. Um, there's a specific reason for this, which we'll get into in a second, but you can definitely choose anything, build your character how you want to build them. So we also get deflect missiles at third level, and we get some bonus proficiencies, uh, which is really great. We get the performance performance skill. <laughs> and here we also get our drunken technique, which is really why I decided to go with this subclass, is because it's at third level when you learn how to twist and turn quickly as part of your flurry of blows. Whenever you use flurry of blows, you gain the benefit of the disengage action and your walking speed increases by 10 feet until the end of your current turn. So for us, this is really good because we are trying to be the ultimate skirmisher. We're like, we're like running all over the place, like pop and pop and then running back and in and out and in and out because we're going to have a lot of movement speed. So I really like this ability. I thought it fit well. And yeah, so very good for us. And then at fourth level, we're going to get our ability score improvement. So I went with mobile, and I think this is a really important feat for us um, because our speed increases by another 10 feet. And when we use the dash action, difficult terrain doesn't cost us extra movement on that turn, which is great because this kind of counteracts our... I don't know if it technically counteracts equine build, but I think it might help a little bit, you know? And when you make a melee attack against a creature, you don't provoke opportunity attacks from that creature for the rest of the turn, whether you are hit or not. So it is, it is, yeah, so, so we've got a lot of you can't hit us, hit us, nanner, nanner, boo, boo, you know what I mean? So at this point, we're a fourth level character and our speed just alone, it's already at, so we started at 40 feet, we get our unarmored extra movement and now by taking mobile that's another 10 feet so we're at 60 feet and then if we are not you if we're just using our regular movement and say we use our flurry of blows in that turn that'll put us at 70 feet for our movement speed which is awesome so then at fifth level we want to get to fifth level just because that gets us extra attack and that's really good for us uh, and then we also get Stunning Strike at 5th level, which is super great. So when that's that's our first five levels of the character, right? We're already almost halfway done. Um, so then, what you, you're going to want to go rogue, actually, after this. And we are going to want to get two levels in rogue. Um, the first level is nice, just gives us ec expertise um, and a little bit of sneak attack, which can be nice for us. But the real reason we're taking Rogue is to get Cunning Action. Um, and as a monk, while we can use our key points to use Step of the Wind, we also don't get a lot of key points. So this basically gives us something similar to Step of the Wind, but we can just do it uh, like without using key points, which honestly I think is worth the two levels. Um, but you you might be wrong you might just want to use your key points for it but i think that this character is someone that's moving around so much that it's actually worth taking the two levels just to get cunning action um and we're mainly using it you can hide as well which may be helpful but we are mainly using it for the, the dash action as a bonus action so if we are so at this point, we are a level 7 character. Our movement speed is 60 feet on the base, right? 60, 60 foot base moving speed. But if we use our movement speed, that's 60 feet. And then dash as a bonus action, that's 120 feet. And then we use our... Uh, <laughs> our action, when you take the dash action as well, then that's 180 feet in one round at level 7 as a centaur, preferably a vampire centaur. I think that's kind of terrifying, personally. 
that's pretty scary. And you're also punching people, not only with your fists, but your hooves. So imagine getting drive by right? By, by, like, a horse girl that just, like, kicks you in the balls and then keeps running. Like, I don't know. That's pretty, that's pretty, like, what, like, what just happened? I think that's cool. <laughs> um... So then after we take our two levels in Rogue, we are going to come back here, take one more level in Monk, or, this is kind of a split path again, or what you can do is go then three levels of Barbarian, but I think just taking the one level of Monk uh, first would be a little bit better, so then we can be pretty monkey. Because we've got our key empowered strikes, which gives us, uh, like, magical fists and hooves, which is amazing. Um, we are magical, <laughs> magical horse girl now. Um, and we also get more unarmored movement. So instead of ten, an extra 10 feet, uh, we get an extra 15 more feet. So we're at 65 feet for a base movement speed. And then we also get a uh, tipsy sway. Which isn't, like, anything crazy, but it might be nice, you know, especially, uh, it might be harder for us to get up since we're, like, a horse. But since we have the tipsy sway, we can just, I don't even know how this would work. Like, I just kind of have this terrifying picture of my mind of, like, a horse just, like, jumping, like, they get knocked over and they'll just, like, centaur, like, leaping back up. Like, to me, that's terrifying. And then you also get redirect attack, which is pretty nice, too. So... Then we're actually already finished with our monk levels, and we're finished with our rogue levels, right? This next, you can choose if you want to take the one level of druid or start going into barbarian here, because there's we're doing a lot of multi-classing. Um, personally, here, I would go into barbarian first, so that's what we're going to do. Which is nice, we are going to get more hit points, because we get our d12 hit die, so we're going to be a little bit more beefy here. Uh, we're going to get our Rage, which is great. We're going to get our Unarmored Defense, which isn't going to do much for us because our Wisdom is much better than our Constitution. Uh, we're going to get Reckless Attack, which is nice. We may be wanting to use this sometimes, especially if our enemies aren't really able to hit us. If we're Reckless Attacking and then like just running out of there. So this is actually kind of nice. It could give us advantage, which may also give us Sneak, sneak Attack as well. So it's overall, it, it actually fits pretty good with our abilities of going in and out of combat all the time. We also get our Danger Sense here, um, which is nice, but nothing super necessary. And then we get our Primal Path. And here... <laughs> Here we are going to take Path of the Totem Warrior. And you might be like, Ash, why would we take Path of the Totem Warrior? Bear Totem doesn't make any sense for this build. Well, that's because we're not going Bear Totem, guys. This is a build where we're taking Path of the Totem Warrior and not going Bear Totem. I know. It's crazy. It's unheard of. It's not unheard of. I, most of the Totem Paths are actually really good. So, for our Totem Spirit... We are going to get three options, right? So it's not three options. It's more than three options. I knew that. It's the bear, the eagle, the elk, the tiger, and the wolf. But it's five options. I can count. <laughs> we are going to choose the elk. And why we're choosing the elk is because while you are raging and you aren't wearing heavy armor, and we're going to be wearing no armor, which is perfect for us, your walking speed increases by another 15 feet. So if we rage, we're at a 65 foot movement speed right now, just on base, right? So then we rage, and then 65 plus 15 is 80. So that's going to put us at an 80 base movement speed while raging. That's, that's amazing. That's so nice. So... Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot of it's a lot of goofing around. And then the reason that we actually are taking Druid here, just one level of Druid after we take our Barbarian levels to finish us off. Um, you're probably like, why is there just one random level of Druid in here? Like, this makes no sense. We took Druid specifically 
only actually to get access to the spell Long Strider. <laughs> because it lasts for an hour, and when you touch a creature, the target's speed increases by 10 feet until the spell ends. So, if we use this spell, and then we rage, that's an extra 25 feet of movement. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> let's look at this. Let's look at this really quick. So let's go to our character sheet, right? And you can see that our base speed, or base just walking speed, just like normal walking speed is 65 feet. Like, that's terrifying. Like, imagine someone just like, like, I don't know, that's double more than most people's walking speeds or most characters' walking speeds, right? So let's do the math on all of this and see how far we can move in one turn. Now, the way of the Drunken Master movement, unfortunately, doesn't really come into play here because we're not going to be using this turn to attack. But if we were attacking on this turn and use Flurry of Blows, then that would be extra movement just for that turn. But it's not going to count since we're not doing that, right? So we have our 60 foot, five, 65 feet of walking speed, right? And then we're going to cast Long Strider on ourselves using one of our two first level spell slots so we can cast it twice. <laughs> um, so that's going to be an extra 10 feet of movement. And then we're going to assume that we're also raging during this time, which means that we have another 15 feet of movement, which means that our movement speed is 90 feet. So if we have a movement speed of 90 feet, if we use our move speed in one turn, and then we use a bonus action to dash. And then we use our action to dash. That is 270 feet in one round at level 12. You can definitely move more with this build, especially if you continue onto higher levels. If you're able to take more monk levels or if you wanted to take two levels in fighter um, and then get a uh, action surge and then you can use your another action on top of that even though it would only be for one round it's still a lot um so yeah that is this build it's all about moving we're not we can do other things but it's definitely a lot of just like pop pop hitting hitting things and then running away <laughs> Um, it's kind of silly, but I enjoyed making this build. Uh, maybe it inspires you guys. I have never seen anyone actually play a centaur. Maybe play a centaur. I think they're cool, especially... Imagine a vampire sound centaur. It's so cool. I think it's so cool. <laughs> so, yeah, there's definitely more ways to optimize this, too. If anyone has any ideas on how to get the centaur move speed all the way to 300 feet by level 12, definitely let me know. I'd be interested in hearing. But, uh, yeah... Let us, let us move on to our next build now. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, for our next build here, we have Bugbear. And for the Bugbear, this Bugbear build, it is a Bugbear. I've said Bugbear a lot. <laughs> uh, while not focusing on movement speed, we are focusing on the range of the attacks. How far we can get our range as a player character so so there may be a better way to do this this is just ideas i had i'd love to hear if you guys also have any ideas but of course everyone knows the main reason we're taking bug bear here is for our feature long limb so when you make a melee attack on your turn your reach for it is five feet greater than normal so you have a 10 foot reach just with your long, your long ass limbs all on their own, flopping, flopping away out there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, which is great for us. Bugbears also get, honestly, a lot of really great abilities. Um, because you get surprise attack and you also get sneaky and powerful build and, and fate ancestry. Like, bugbears are actually really underrated in my opinion. But... We have another build that features both the monk and the barbarian, personally, which I think is crazy. That That's crazy. So, I would either start monk or fighter here, but I'd probably start monk because you want to get to extra attack as soon as possible. And 
that is that's the that's the main reason because we're going to get to extra attack with our monk and not our fighter levels so we go to our class features a lot of the same things we already talked about our unarmored defense martial arts key we do get extra movement which is nice but in this build we're not after it specifically but it's still it's still a bonus it's a it's a it's a little bitty bonus now at third level we get our monastic to our monastic tradition and you guys might have already assumed that this is like the subclass that we were going to take but it is way of the astral self um and so the reason we're taking this is because we get arms of the astral self at third level so what this allows us to do <laughs> um for 10 minutes, these spectral arms hover near your shoulders or surround your arms. Your choice. You determine the arm's appearance and they vanish early if you are incapacitated or die. And while these spectral arms are present, you gain the following benefits. You can use your wisdom modifier in place of your strength modifier. That's actually really great for us, too. That's amazing. Uh, you can use these spectral arms to make unarmed strikes. Wonderful. And here it is. Here is the kicker, y'all. When you make an unarmed strike with your arms on your turn, your reach for it is five feet greater than normal. So, for us, for our purposes, this means with our arms of the astral self out at third level, we already have a character reach of of 15 feet we can we have control of people in a 15 foot circle all right just imagine this character with sentinel no one is escaping them ever <laughs> so yeah and that's only a third level guys we still got a little bit to go um but we're gonna get our ability score improvement here which you can take any feat, however, uh, I Sentinel would be a really good one to take here. I went with Lunging Attack, or Martial Adept, to specifically take Lunging Attack, because we're taking a different fighter subclass. So, since you only get... I could be wrong about this, I'm not super... I don't know that much about Battle Master stuff. But, since you only get one superiority die, I believe you can only use this maneuver... Uh, once per, per short rest. I could be wrong though, but I'm pretty sure, which is unfortunate. However, once per short rest or long rest, we can extend our range, okay, by another five feet because when we make a melee attack on our turn, you can spend one superiority die to increase your reach for that attack by five feet. So that's going to give us a reach of 20 feet. It's only for one attack. But it's 20 feet. And this will make a little bit more sense when we take uh, some more multi-class levels because then our reach is going to grow even more. And sometimes a lot of characters only have a 30 foot movement speed. So if you're able to hit someone after they go 30 feet, that's crazy. That's terrifying. So... We also are going to get slow fall here, and then at 5th level we're going to get our extra attack and stunning strike. But, after we go to 5th level of monk, right, then we're going to want to go to fighter. We're taking our fighter levels now, baby. Yes, sir. So we're going to get our, our d10 hit die, which is nice. Uh, proficiencies, whatever. Our fighting style. Um, I went with unarmed fighting, but I don't know. You can honestly go with anything. I think blind fighting would work here. Um, but you don't want something that has to do with weapons because we are going to be punching people again with our fists. But this might help in terms of damage. Um, and because, you know, you get the, you get a little bit of a buff to your unarmed strikes, but it's kind of confusing how it's worded because of the astral like arms so if you can take unarmed fighting style and then use a d8 and still use your wisdom modifier then that would be great i talked to your dm about that it's uh, 
yeah, it, that's like a little bit of like a rules lawyering thing right there. So that's that's something I just talked to her DM about. You know what I mean? Um, but it's also nice. This is another great thing because we can grapple so far. Um, at the start of each of your turns, you can deal 1d4 bludgeoning damage to one creature grappled by you, which is nice. We've got a lot of arms to grapple a lot of, a lot of creatures, so that might actually be really nice. Um, and that's kind of why I took it. It's just a little bit of extra damage, which, you know, sometimes, sometimes a creature's hanging on by, like, one, one or two hit points, so it could, it can make a difference. Uh, then we're just gonna get second win, and then we get our action surge, and then at third level, we get the big chongus, the big chonga manga. <laughs> we get our subclass, which is what we're here for. And we are taking Rune Knight. Yes, indeedy. It is Rune Knight Tom bitches. So, uh, we get Smith's tools and we can speak, read, and write giant, which is a little bit of a cool, cool bonus. But we also get Rune Carver, um, which uh, you can take really any, any runes that you want um any runes that are helpful to you specifically but there's nothing here that I think hmm, I guess the best way to put this I don't think any like of the runes are super they're all really they're all good they're all good but for our purposes it doesn't matter just pick your favorite that's what I was trying to say <laughs> but here's the big one this is what this is what we were after you have learned how to imbue yourself with the might of the giants. As a bonus action, you magically gain the following benefits, which last for one minute. You, if you are smaller than large, you become large. Along with anything you are wearing, if you lack the room to become large, your size doesn't change. You have advantage on strength checks and strength throws. Once on each of your turns, one of your attacks with a weapon or an unarmed strike can deal an extra 1d6 damage to a target. So, why this matters to us is because when you grow a size, um, when you go from a medium creature to a large creature, your area of attack expands by five feet. So this is going to give us another another five feet. So at this point, if we are using Giant's Might, then that's we're going to be at a 20 foot, a 20 foot attack range, I believe, if I'm doing the math right off the top of my head. So that's a 20 foot, 20 foot attack range. Because we were, yeah, we were at 15, right? So this is 20. And then if we do our lunging attack once per short rest, that's going to be able to, we're going to be able to get up to 25 feet away. We can attack someone from 25 feet away. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can do a similar thing if you maybe took Kensai uh, Monk and you had a pole arm. That is another option for this this build is doing a polearm build, but I thought this was more fun because I think it's terrifying if you just have like a cartoonishly long limb like from twenty five feet away just like punch you, like I think that's hysterical personally. Um, so those are gonna be our fighter levels, and then. <laughs> This one, I wasn't sure about if I was actually going to take it, but I thought it would be cool because if we're focusing on being a build that has a lot of limbs, a lot of limmy wimmy whims, you know, and we want to attack a lot of things as far as we can, I was like, all right, all right, let's, let's, this, this could work. This could work. It might also be, help us grapple. So let's get into it. So for our first barbarian level... We're going to get D12 hit points, which again is going to help make us more chonky, which we always appreciate. We're going to get our rage, which is great. Rage is always super great. Uh, you know, helps us help uh, helps us take damage. We are going to get unarmored defense, which for us isn't going to be as helpful, but that's okay because we're going to be focusing mainly on our wisdom and our constitution since we have the way of the astral self feature that we can use our wisdom for attacks. So... We get a reckless attack, which could also, you know, be helpful uh, in some situations. We get danger sense. And now at third level, we get our primal path. And so 
I know Path of the Beast is not it. I think it could definitely be a better subclass. I think it's cool thematically, but I think it should be more of like a full lycanthrope subclass. But for this build, I actually think it works really well. It's one of those niche things that I'm like, wait, this this is actually really cool. So we get our form of the beast here. And this one, I believe, yeah, this has three options. So for us, we are going to be choosing. Um, so we can choose this every time we enter a rage, which is nice. It gives us a little bit of like diversity. However, the one, however, the one that we really want is the tail. That's probably the one we're going to be choosing every time. And maybe even just talk to your DM about having like a permanent cool long tail because I don't know. Just having a weird tail that grows every time, that makes me a little uncom uncomfy. But if it's, like, a permanent weird tail, that makes me less uncomfy. Just talk to your DM. Do what you want to do, you know? But for the tail. You grow a lashing spiny tail, which deals 1d8 piercing damage on a hit. Has the reach property. Huh? Huh? If a creature can see within 10 feet of you... Oh, if a creature you can see within 10 feet of you hits you with an attack roll, you can use your reaction to swipe your tail... A D8 applying a bonus to your DC, sorry, applying a bonus to your AC to the number rolled, potentially causing the attack to miss you, which is great. Not only do we get a tail, we get a little bonus for our AC if we want to use our reaction for that, which probably not. We're probably going to be doing lots of opportunity attacks with our reach, but since we have the long-limbed feature and the tail is a limb... That actually means that our tail is 15 feet instead of 10 feet. So we have a 15 freaking foot tail, which is crazy. And I did double check and that is actually how the rules apply here. So it's a 15 foot tail. Um, so I would talk to your DM. I would also imagine that then the, the creature thing applies to within 15 feet of you because you have a 15 foot tail. So I would talk to your DM. That's probably like... Because I think that's the only way you can really make that happen is if you take the bugbear. And so it's probably not something they thought of. So, I'd, yeah, talk to your DM. But those are all of our class levels. And so overall, most of the time, we're going to have a 20-foot range, which is a huge range when we are in combat. And we're also going to have uh, four arms and a tail. And we can attack with all of them. <laughs> I don't know. To me, I just think this was a super fun, like, silly build that can actually be really good. Like, you can do some damage, and you can also take a decent amount of damage, especially if you're raging. And it's just fun and silly, and I enjoyed it a lot. And I hope you guys enjoyed it a lot. And maybe it inspired you to, to do some cool, some cool, wacky builds. So, if we do look at our character sheet, though, here really quick. Yeah, you will see. So, we have a 15-foot range for our, uh arms of the astral self because of our long-limbed feature and then here our form of the beast tail reach is 15 feet so and then if we grow using our giant's might feature all of this just changes to 20 feet which is crazy so it's 20 foot range like automatically and then if we launch attack it's 25 now we didn't quite get to 30 unfortunately which is is unfortunate if you all have a better way uh of getting 230 feet of like move of range so you can just attack anyone from 30 feet like let me know i would love to hear about that uh because i couldn't think of a way to get all the way up to a 30 foot range i know there's a way to do it but i think you need more than 12 levels i think you have to be like higher class and i'm trying to do it within the confines of like a regular campaign you know what i mean so you can actually play the character all the way up and like enjoy them but some campaigns you know maybe they maybe you do go higher than 12 level who knows but that's typically where most things end anyway um i want to thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you have an amazing rest of your day please don't forget to subscribe i really appreciate it your support of the channel means a lot and helps me continue to make these videos so yeah don't forget to uh subscribe have a wonderful day and uh bye <laughs> thanks for watching